Today we're going to be reading from Ocean Vong on Earth. We are briefly gorgeous. Sorry, I can't trace. Veer backwards in the viewfinder. But we're reading from Ocean Vong because he recently published a newer book, Time is Mother. It's actually not a novel book, it's a um, collection of poetry and anthology. I'm probably going to break this video down in parts, but I thought I'd read from part 3, because that's the most recent thing I read. And it's so beautiful, his writing is crazy. There will be a part 2, there will be a part 3. This book is dense with beauty. I'm just going to read small fragments, sections that probably don't make sense without context, but the language to me is very beautiful. Um, I implore you and I ask you, you know, support the author, he's amazing, so if you want, buy it. Um, but I'm also not going to be like, no, you need to spend your money. Um, so request a local library if they don't have the copy yet. I request them to get it. But if they do have it, borrow it, read it, write down your favourite quotes like I do. I've entered pencil marks, this book is amazing, truly. So yeah, that's why some sentences are not going to make sense, but this video is more about helping you relax with some of the beautiful manipulations of language that Ocean Vong employs. Are you ready to be read to? Now let's begin. Okay, part three. I'm on the train from New York City In the window, my face won't let me go And that's how he begins the section That's talent, man I'm broken into, the message said Into It was the only thought I could keep sitting In my seat, how losing a person could make more of us the living, make us too, into, yes, that's more like it, as in, now I'm broken into, but we both know I'm leaving, I'm going to New York, to college, the whole point of us meeting was to say goodbye, or rather, just to be side by side, a farewell of presence, of proximity, the way men are supposed to do. A comma superimposed by a period the mouth so naturally makes. Isn't that the saddest thing in the world, Ma? A comma forced to be a period. It's in these moments next to you that I envy words for doing what we can never do. How they can tell all of themselves simply by standing still, simply by being. Actually, this, this section is pretty fucking sad, so there's not too much relaxing readings, but here's one. They say nothing lasts forever, but they're just scared it will last longer than they can love it. The truth is, I'm worried they will get us before they get us. What if art was not measured by quantity, by ricochets? What if art was not measured? In Vietnamese, the word for missing someone and remembering them is the same. Sometimes when you ask me over the phone, Con no me con, I flinch. 
Thinking you meant to you remember me. I miss you more than I remember you. Cocaine laced with oxycodone makes everything fast and still at once. Around the corner by the traffic light blinking yellow because that's what the lights do in our town after midnight. They forget why they're here. I'm not making this up, I made it down. Is that what art is? To be touched thinking that what we feel is ours when in the end it was someone else in longing who finds us. I'm not with you because I'm at war with everything else. I'm not telling you a story so much as a shipwreck. The pieces floating, finally legible. I'm thinking now of Duchamp, Duchamp. I never know how to pronounce many things. But anyway, I'm thinking now of Duchamp, Duchamp his infamous sculpture, how by turning a urinal, an object of stable and permanent utility, upside down, he radicalized its reception. By further naming it Fountain, he divested the object of its intended identity, rendering it with an unrecognizable new form. I hate him for this. I hate how he proved that the entire existence of a thing could be changed simply by flipping it over, revealing a new angle to its name, an act completed by nothing else but gravity. What Simone Weil said, perfect joy excludes even the very feeling of joy. For in the soul filled by the object, no corner is left for saying, I... I was still there, still me, but my hand found Trevor instead. As if by being inside me, he was this new extension of myself. The Greeks thought sex was the attempt of two bodies separated long ago to return to one life. I don't know if I believe this, but that's what it felt like. As if we were two people mining one body and in doing so merged until no corner was left saying I. I was in that moment more naked than I was with my clothes off. I was inside out. We had become what we feared most. In the sudden dark, I made out only his pale back, grey, blue, and the unlight. What have we become to each other, if not what we've done to each other? Although this was not the first time he did this, it was the only time the act gained new concussive power. I was devoured, it seemed, not by a person, a Trevor, so much as by desire itself. I love when poets use the word desire. I've never been able to use it proper. I feel. But without a name, most things get lost. I watch two daughters care for their own with an inertia equal to gravity. As I look at Paul's face on the screen, 
this soft-spoken man, this stranger turned grandfather turned family, I realize how little I know of us, of my country, of any country. Standing by the dirt road, not unlike the road land had once stood on nearly 40 years earlier, an M16 pointed at her nose as she told you. I'll wait until my grandpa's voice, this retired tutor, vegan and marijuana grower, this lover of maps and camas, finishes his last words to his first love, and then close the laptop. To ask what's good was to move right away to joy. It was pushing aside what was inevitable to reach the exceptional. And this is perhaps my most favorite quote of the book, the one that I remember so must have stood out. A flower is seen only toward the end of its life, just bloomed and already on its way to being brown paper. How often do we name something after its briefest form? Rosebush, rain, butterfly, snapping turtle, firing squad, childhood, death, mother tongue, me, you. All freedom is relative, you know too well. And sometimes it's not freedom at all, but simply the cage widening far away from you. The bars abstracted with distance, but still there. As when they free wild animals into nature preserves only to contain them yet again by larger borders. But I took it away, that widening, because sometimes not seeing the bars is enough. For a few delirious moments in the barn, as Trevor and I fucked, the cage around me became invisible, even if I knew it was never gone. How my elation became a trap when I lost control of my inner self. How waste, shit, excess is what binds the living yet is always present and perennial, perennial in death. When the calves are finally butchered, surrendering their insides is often their final act. Their bowels shocked from the sudden velocity of endings. Not ocean vong making shitting during sex. Very poetic. Where my little dog? Your rose, your land, your Trevor, as if a name can be more than one thing, deep and wide as a night with a truck idling at its edge. And you can step right out of your cage where I wait for you. Where, under the stars, we see at last what we've made of each other in the light of long dead things. And call it good. The way this man connects everything that he writes about, it feels biblical. He's amazing. It all comes around and it's not forced or heavy handed. I just, I love this book. And I'm sorry that I'm basically just freeloading and reading so much of it, but he's truly amazing. And I want to share that, you know, here's the thing, I think beauty demands replication or something like that. So Mr. Vong, this is on you, alrighty. I remember my father, which is to say I am putting him back together. I mean, I love when poets say, which is to say. <laughs> I remember crawling underneath, checking for chewed gum, the names of lovers. Neighbors, having learned of a sudden death, would in under an hour pool money and hire a troupe of drag performers 
for what was called delaying sadness. In Saigon, the sound of music and children playing this late in the night is a sign of death, or rather, a sign of a community attempting to heal. Unicorns stamping in a graveyard. I was a gaping wound in the middle of America and you were inside me asking Where are we? Where are we baby? I remember looking at you for a long time and because I was sick I thought I could simply transmit my thoughts into your head if I stared hard enough Relatable As I rubbed my face a middle aged man gripped my neck the way Vietnamese fathers or uncles often do when trying to pull their strength into you. Yes, there was a war. Yes, we came from its epicenter. In that war, a woman gifted herself a new name. Land. And that naming claimed herself beautiful, then made that beauty into something worth keeping. From that, a daughter was born, and from that daughter, a son. We were born from beauty. Let no one mistake us for the fruit of violence, but that violence, having passed through the fruit, failed to spoil it. Another favourite, and we're getting grease lumps. You know, I think I've read enough to you for tonight. I don't want to overload you and I don't want to <laughs> steal completely from motion. But I hope you're doing well. And I hope I'll see you in the next one. Let me know if you want me to read more from Ocean Bonks. On Earth, we're briefly gorgeous. I've also got nice skies and exit wounds. As I say, wounds, I think.